welcome to game number one here. This is going to be... Ooh, hang on a second. What are we seeing here? He's going Empire. What is... Peak of... Okay, well. Anyway, this is not what I was expecting in terms of factions. Anyway, so here are we are in the finals of the uh, February Land Wars 2018. Uh, I think I'm up to 2017 in the stream title. But anyway, nevertheless, uh, we have the Yellow Empire player. It is Dimon. Versus the Blue Soviets. It's uh, Pika. Not the factions that I was expecting, because of course Dimon, classically an M uh, Soviet player, and Pika uh, prefers allies. But nevertheless, we're going to be seeing two players off race in this uh, game this time around. So apparently there was a little bit of lag, and uh, um, uh, Dimon decided to choose Empire because of that. Maybe thinking that Soviets requires a tiny bit more micro in the matchup than Empire. But nevertheless, a few uh, flax and bears coming on forward out of Pika to start things off here. As he looks to try and pick off one of the dojos and stop any harassment from coming his way on the map. From any foxy dojos, etc. But have to be careful not to lose these flak troopers as of course one might just go down here. Very close, but not quite from him. Sticking with the barracks for beforehand now, going right into the super reactor, so we're not going to be seeing any early sickles or terror drones coming out from the Soviets. We're going to be sticking with this infantry for now. Because if this uh, flutter goes down, we won't be able to pick up this dojo, so I have to be careful not to lose it from to these Imperial Warriors now. So we're now going into the uh, mecha bay, of course. Try not to delay that too much. Try to get the Tengu prediction up and running as soon as he can. A good micro from both sides so far. Taking minimal losses and as much damage as they can. That's more or less where we were in the game. This is the first one. Come on down and damage this collector. There's another Tengu production has now started. Two now on the field, looking to move on forward. Maybe even looking to even capture this oil derrick with some extra support. As a few more Tengus come on out. Torodron looking to try and break on forward with this tank as well. With some good stun micro, should be able to take these two Tengus out. But Engineer capturing the oil derrick here. Taking this out of the equation for the Soviet player. Good turtle and micro, good uh, locking down of both those Tengus, making sure he can just go in and maximise the damage there. As Pika moves on forward, looks to go to get his uh, third refinery on the high ground. <clears throat> just the last moment gets the mine off there, so it does manage to successfully defend. The tank, Pterodon, and uh, Bullfog coming on forward, and there's nothing right here. There's nothing here at the moment for Demon. Sells off the barracks to try and get an Imperial Warrior out and uh, pick up this Pterodon, but has to be careful not to get crushed. Demon in a little bit of trouble here. Can't be losing his Tengu either. That's almost his entire army. Here is now a Tsunami Tank looking to try and pick off the rest of this army in his main base. But Pika at the moment in great position, going for his third refinery once again, retaking that oil derrick from the Soviet player. Two tanks now out, should be able to clean this up, but of course, uh, with his turret on, he can still be pesky for a long time and try and delay this mining for as long as he can. Maybe he can go for the infection, but does indeed for now get forced back. Going into the airfield behind the third finally as well is now Pika. As Demon looking to try and maybe push on forward and get some aggression in of his own. Because in, on the economic front, things aren't quite going his way at the moment. Maybe even might be seeing an MCV cell as he goes into some sort of tier 2 push. But I don't think going into the economy behind this would really be the best choice. Terror drones uh, and uh, MCV trying to pick off all of these tanks right now. As only one does go down as Terror goes at the safety of this bullfrog. 
collects it, starts to take some damage again. He's going for this refinery, but I don't think it's going to quite work out as he plans here. As all of his, all of his units are seemingly going down, one of the Tengus manages to get to safety in the water, but all of these tsunami tanks are going to fall. At, at what? Maybe the price of a collector? That's definitely not a, a, That's definitely not something that uh, Pika's going to be too cared, too bothered about, really. So gets in, manages to get a little bit of damage done on this collector, but might even die to a conscript. Not very much health there. Third refinery now out for the Empire player. And there goes the Tengu. But a couple of tanks moving on forward, even a twin blade and some bullfrogs. I really don't think this game is going to last too much longer. It's pretty much over. If you have to, if you have to force a point defense zone to save a collector, you know you're in bad shape. As these couple of tanks move on forward, and this might simply just be. Uh, maybe if he can sell the MCV now, he might be okay. But having lost that barracks as well, I think it is still a little bit too late. And there goes Demon. As he loses game number one against Pika in this finals. Alright, hello and welcome to game number two here between the blue Soviets player on the left of Battlebase Beta. It is once again Pika, off racing for a second time in a row. And at the top of Battlebase Beta we have the yellow Empire instead of Soviets. It is Demon, again off racing in this finals. So the first game was a little bit of an unusual match. Both players seemingly a little bit flustered, a little bit off the usual game. Maybe a little bit of lag at play, but definitely just simply having played the, the faction, having played the factions that they're not quite as comfortable with. But nevertheless, we are indeed seeing four dojos out of the Empire player to begin with, trying to go for his own old Dirk, maybe pushing over on forward to try and take his opponent's one as well. With all of his conscripts in the garrison, should be safe enough to uh, secure that location. Of course, Tengu's at the early stages of this game in this matchup aren't really that great. Because, of course, having been able to uh, defend both these refineries in the main base with a single turret and with this refinery on the high ground being easily defendable by a half wall uh, with this garrison taken. Early Tengu's really not the best option in this game. So sticking with the early infantry, selling both the ones in his main base there, but keeping one of them deployed on the high ground there, looking to get some infantry uh, harassment in with these tank pushes as well. He's been paying attention here, what's he doing with his infantry? He's not get taking the garrison. A little bit of a mistake out of Dim on there. Loses a lot of infantry that he really shouldn't have lost. So a bit of a blunder from him in the early stages of this game here. He's going for this burst run, getting a scout off finally. We'll be seeing that he has gone in uh, to this uh, super reactor first once again before this war factory. A little bit of sloppy micro out of Demon here. Could be uh, a little bit more cost effective with his units. Pika seemingly defended quite well for the time being, but here is now the tank buses. Here are the tanks. Infantry production definitely hasn't uh, hasn't ended quite yet. He's continuing to push on forward, looking to break the Soviet player with his aggression in the early stages. Terrador managed to make his way on past his, uh, past his opponent's units, maybe looking to get some harassment in of his own. Didn't get picked up, managed to break on forward. That's not what he wants. There's nothing to defend as the main base here. Mecha base still not even deployed. Might get stunned down. That is a huge pick off there. That might just that might just be game. If an Empire player cannot get his Mecha beat up, it gets killed off by a Flak Trooper. That's a huge pick off there. That's 2,000 credits down the drain, not achieving anything. But in the same time, Barracks falls and the infantry manages to break its way on forward. Has been sold off for the time being. Actually, one, ha one still remains, but starts to push on forward. Barracks, second Barracks goes down. Now the War Factory under a lot of pressure. MCV in a little bit of trouble here. Will he just be simply going for a couple of dojos to try and defend this? Or what's his option going to be? A few, pieces, a few uh, flag troopers there. Tank buses to defend. There goes the War Factory. And there goes the Sickle few more bears do survive here and are looking to try and survive for long enough to keep this uh, 
army at bay. Haven't picked off that uh, bullfrog there. Haven't picked off. Oh, let's be careful not to lose this. Uh, he's going to get infected. Oh, oh. Slightly too early on that uh, production of that mecha bay there. Gets another one infected. That really did not need to happen. That's two mecha bays that have been infected right off the bat. Now going for a sentry gun to try and defend this. Is for the time being, it seems like maybe this aggression has been thwarted. Now, I definitely don't think it would be a bad idea if he still had that barracks to just simply get a few of burst drones and pick off this uh, refinery. Because maybe we maybe can't push on too far forward with just some just some uh, just some of these tank buses, but burst drones would be able to finish off the job. It's selling off the MCV now. Dimon realizing he's he's in dire straits. Has to get back into the game. Has to get some units out. Versus the impending airfield uh, pressure, which is coming his way. MCV also pushing on forward. Maybe just thinking he could go for an MCV push, camp this uh, mecha bay, take it out, and finish the game from there. But stopping the advancement on forward with this garrison in the centre was well, nice from the uh, Empire player there. Looking to pick off all these conscripts before they can do major damage against all of this MCV here. They cannot get these stunned down. Has to be careful against the bears. As he continues to push on forward. Picking off the bears one by one. Is he still on tier one? Has a few of these uh, tank buses in his main base though. Is a little bit of a safety net as the engineer comes on forward with his uh, sudden transport. Looking to try and pick off the airfield probably. Maybe even the super reactor. As this could be a huge move. Has to be careful here. Twin Blade coming on back. Sells off the super reactor. And even stays alive there. Whether Tengu to support this. If can keep this alive, it would be huge. And it hasn't died, it's still there! Oh my god, that is a huge pickoff. And he didn't have to sell that super reactor. He could he didn't have to sell the super reactor. There was no way that a super reactor could have helped the Empire player in that situation. He might have well kept it. So Dimon, with a crazy comeback that didn't need to happen there, Pika, involuntarily just selling off that super reactor, he didn't need to, he could have still won the game. With the infantry and his MCV pushing through the centre, and the airfield, Soviets didn't have to quit. I really don't think that game was over yet, but nevertheless, selling the super reactor was definitely the nail in the coffin there. And Dimon... Went, went on to win the game, so there we have it. So hello and welcome to game number three here between the uh, blue Soviets player on the left of Commander Republic. It is Pika, off racing once again. And likewise, off racing on the right, we have the yellow Empire player, it is Dimon. So tying up the series there with a questionable, uh, questionable move out of his opponent, the Pika there. But nevertheless, Engineers, very powerful units, cannot be taken lightly. Nevertheless, it's going to be Pika's map of choice going into a big map for Cabana Republic here. It is now going into both these refineries and with these three dojos looking to go in to capture one of these Ulderics. Shouldn't be getting too much damage done with it though. Not like last game with a huge on full on infantry assault. Sticking with a little bit more of a standard way of playing this time around. But the burst one coming on forward, looking to get a scout off, should be able to get into his opponent's base and see what is what. And we'll see this time, Pika mixing it up, going for a fast war factory. For the second refinery here. So we're going to be seeing some early aggression out of the Soviets player. As he starts to push on forward. So the third one, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that maybe he's wanting to use this to pick up this uh, this dojo core. It's really his primary target at this stage in the game. But you have to be careful infecting dojo cores because a turret one's more expensive than a dojo core. So if it gets destroyed, then you lose a turret one and you've 
You're in a deficit. Nice awareness of that burst when they're keeping you alive as long as you can. But will indeed get picked off when these in when these indeed get there. So right into the Tengu production coming out from the Empire player. Is it one trying to find an opening, trying to find his way forward? But so far, this infantry really hasn't achieved very much. Going for a single flak trooper here inside the bullfrog. I'm not really sure what his plan is with this. Maybe he's looking to take, a ga uh, take one of the garrisons at the top. Maybe just a crucial production in the centre. Maybe even this one. But so far, doesn't seem to be a great choice of units. Fast Wolf actually doesn't seem to be doing too much at this stage in the game. But now he's just going into the super reactor and going for his expansion to the north. As likewise, Dimon doing the same thing. With the Tengu count high in abundance now, should be able to defend this. Older can take the capture for himself. Now Tankless joins the army to secure this location. So maybe it's continuing with the tank pistols here, realizing there's a potential for aggression to the north. Instead, it's going back into the engineer now, looking to follow things up and go to the last stages of the game. A good catch on that bullfrog there, just forcing him to stay back and just delaying him for quite a while. There's uh, Pika. It's, it's weird just calling Pika the, the Soviet player. It's so I'm so used to seeing Dimon as Soviets and Pika is not Soviets. Because Ally he's, he's not a Soviet player, so it's just quite weird seeing him in this position. But nevertheless, forced out of the northern position, couldn't contest with the tank busters at this stage, forced to the water, into a position where, to be honest, maybe he can't contest in the skies. So it's a bit of a risky move once again moving down here. As he moves forward with the tanks, moves forward with the bullfogs in the turret zone, trying to get some damage done of his own. Engineer still not getting the capture, however. Not quite paying attention with this. Because our tanks have made their way on forward. Using the walls here to try and just uh, delay the harassment for as long as possible and stop the, the camp of this, me of this mecha bear with the turret drone. Doesn't want to get stunned down. Finally, he comes on to get the capture there. But the Soviets player still only on two refineries. Likewise, Empire as well, but does have the two oil to back him up. Might get a free tank. Not too shabby there. As the Terradorn and the tanks and the flak trooper also go on forward there towards the MCB. And there's just nothing to defend it. There's nothing there to defend it. A couple of tanks back. Maybe you can use the, the Tengus to harass. But, he, but and maybe he can use the Tengu to suicide and defend his MCV here, but he might as well sell it off at this stage. MCV in a little bit of trouble, and they cannot really I, realistically see a way of that coming out, staying in this game. And there indeed it goes. There's only some tanks now to remain uh, remaining. Demon in a little bit of hurt here. Still has these Tengus, decided not to engage, keeping them back, trying to get some repairs out. But not moving on forward to back up these tanks at this stage, just keeping them out of harm's way. And that's keeping the Pterodon alive, not leeching the last unit. Good damage here at Apika. Is the MCV... Where's the MCV gone? Did it sell? No, there it is, okay. So now, stunning wound one of the tanks. Is Dimon still not deciding to engage? He has all the Tengus, he could easily take off this army with his Tengus and tanks. But he's not engaging with the army. All he needs to do is drop on top of this turret drone, pick it off, surround the tanks, move forward with his own, and that's it. But he's just waiting too long with his army and he's not deciding to take the engagements that he desperately needs to take. Finally, the Elderic falls. 
that he will engineer, I mean, that he will conscript. But Demon in a world of hurt. He has a lot of units. That's, this, that's definitely obvious, this game. He has a lot of units. But he's lost the MCV. He has no way of advancing forward in the game. He's trying to find an engagement, but not really finding an opening. Finally decides to drop the tangues. Forces the tanks in place. Now that one of them does indeed fall. Manages to pick up the army and force it back. But this is maybe a little bit too little too late. And now the rest of the Soviet army falls as well. Pika has to be careful. I mean, his MCV is in a little bit of a vulnerable position. A lot of tanks are at home, with the Bullfrog as well, and the, and the airfield coming behind it, but the MCV is in a little bit of a precarious location. If Dimon catches wind of this, it could be in a little bit of trouble. Moving his tanks on forward, looking to maybe give a little bit more uh, of a secure location for this MCV. And there finally is the airfield now. Of course, with these Tengus and with these uh, Tier 2 uh, Empire units, Empire can be very cost effective as well as this Twin Fog can be at the same time. With the MCV moving on forward with this Turadorn to stun the positions in place. Pika looking to end the game and end it quickly. There's a couple of VXs now out on the field. Where are the Bullfrogs? Not quite close enough. For staying out of harm's way for the time being. Looking to pick those off so we can go in with his VXs of his own. But where they are, he's not engaging with all the army at the same time. That's a, it's a big mistake out of Dimon here. Splitting off with small groups of units at a time. And he's just getting each, arm, each unit picked apart. Twinblade now out on the field. And with these bullfrogs and with any potential MiGs. It's going to be difficult for the, for the Empire player to really move on forward and get out of his base. Forced to engage in a position he doesn't really want to be. Is first collected now under threat taking some early damage. Tanks rolling on forward but he's, he's severely outnumbered. Five hammer tanks versus four tsunami tanks. The more powerful unit in higher numbers. But now going into this Tengu VX. Lots of VXs out. We'll have to be careful. As he starts to move on forward with the tanks, with all of his units at the same time as well. Looking to force these uh, bullfrogs into a position where he can engage with, with the rest of these tanks and uh, bullfrogs. Tanks and VXs. Start to pick a couple of them off. But for the most part, the VXs survive. The Bullfrogs survive. I mean, the VXs can't quite get there in time. One of the Bullfrogs does indeed before, but nice positioning, nice micro out of this Bullfrog, keeping out of harm's way, maximum distance, so he doesn't lose as much damage as he possibly could. But now, once now, as they have died, where is the rest of the anti-air? There's no MiGs, there's no more Bullfrogs. These tanks are going to fall. Somehow. This is somehow being defended. And Pika is still only on two refineries. Where's the MCV gone? There it is. And it's, under, it's going to die! He's going to lose the MCV now! Pika with the... Unusual decision making. To not to move on forward with only those two refineries against someone with equal, equal refineries. Could have just stayed back. Could have played it safe. Or could have maybe just used the MCV a little bit more aggressively, going for the crush instead of deploying like that. Is maybe just turned turn this game around. Of course, VXs and Tengus are very powerful. I would expect this to probably go into Tengu production now. Out of Pika. Out of Demon. But he is indeed in low power now. Maybe he lost maybe he lost something in the process. But being in low power. It's going to hinder his production quite a bit. Maybe there was an orbital drop or something in the meantime that I didn't notice. That could have been it. 
Yeah, I think that might have been a power plant. But with that, being able to produce at a normal pace, Pika should be okay. Here are the VXs. Here are the Tengu starting to march on forward once again. Will they be able to get the damage done that they need? Get caught by the Bullfrogs in the centre. Decides not to engage. The Twin Blades and the Bullfrogs continuing to move on forward. I don't know if maybe the best choice for, for Vindy to ever dim on at this stage is just to simply try and harass with a couple of stray units and try and get into this MCV once again. Because the longer he stays on this uh, two refinery low power, he's not going to be in great shape. At the same time, another option is to sell off one of the refineries. But that's going to hinder the production. A good harassment from these Tengus at this stage out of, uh, out of the Empire player. Keeping the Soviet player at bay, not allowing him to push on forward, not allowing him to get this dangerous amount of aggression that he potentially could get if he, if he simply moves across the map. This is a lot of Bullfrogs, this is, this is a lot of Twin Blades, and also a MiG to boot. A few more units moving around the sun, setting up another power plant. Maybe realizing that he did, uh, having a low power at this stage doesn't make any difference. But actually, being further in low power can actually affect uh, production even more. So maybe not his. Uh, Best move there. Pika probably rebuilding his MTV at this stage. I'll quickly have a check. There indeed he is. Trying to just elongate this game. Just be in a, safety, a safe position because he doesn't need to engage at this stage. He, of course he can. He can hit and run to his heart's content. But he doesn't need to overcommit. He can just be safe. Just make sure that these units stay at bay. Make sure that these do not move past their home base. Of course, if the VXs can't leave, the VXs can't attack. And that's really where they want to be. As one of them just tries to sneak around the map. But as Lucky Conscript, perfect positioning there, does spot this and will stop any major damage from getting done. Nice having a couple of these conscripts that scattered around the map here. From Piga. I'm really liking that. As the rest of them move on forward, looking to maybe get some damage done. In the position that, uh, that Piga is in, he could very easily just build a, a couple of turrets, build a, a, centri uh, a Tesla coil and a flat cannon. By these production structures, and he will be fine. There's going to be no way that you can get that his opponent is going to be able to get in and destroy this base. That's how he wants to be uh, fully safe, anyway. VXs and Tengus just clearing out whatever they can in the center, which is unprotected. Now a crane is out on the field. This army is very scary out of, D out of Dimon. Really could use some extra bullfrogs, some extra anti-air, but he's moving on forward, trying to expand. It's a risky move once again, because if he gets caught out position, if he can force the units to split up against a, a, a more mobile army, Dimon might find an opening. He just needs to be safe at this stage, does Dimon, does uh, Pika. And separating out like that is just a bit of a too risky move. Maybe a good move would just be to get an engineer and try and uh, capture this uh, war factory. Realising low power now, has enough money in the bank that he can potentially just produce as much as he can. Still low power, if he kept that power plant he'd have been fine now. But 
Now here are the Bullfox, here are the VXs, I mean here are the Tengus, here are the VXs trying to move on forward. Where are the tanks? Nowhere to be seen. Where are the tanks? There are no t there's only one tank and that's gonna, that's not gonna tell all these units. Honorable Discharge will simply do the damage there. Pterodons are gonna go down. Dimon's gonna win this. As long as he doesn't get these units crushed, Bullfogs need to be careful. So do the rest of the units as well. Both players have to be very careful not to sacrifice themselves in this engagement. There is now the first tank. Still alive. As he moves on back to repair. Of course, this is all he has. He has to be careful not to lose any of his units. It's a very powerful army, but a very volatile, very very risky army as well. And if he can just simply draw this game for as long as he can, he'll be in great shape. So VX gets infected there, forced to be uh, destroyed. But now the VX count isn't very scary anymore. And he's gonna need to rebuild this count up, get it up to what uh, up to the scary amount once again. As this buffer count still up to four. Perfectly healthy amount when going up against an equal amount of VXs. But Mig flying too close to the sun their forces. All the units are dropped to the ground. Dimon just looks and looking to escape here. This is a risky, risky move out of Dimon, out of Pika here. He's moved very, very far away from his own main base here. Maybe Dimon can mount a counter attack. There is nothing in his main base. If these VXs can move down there with these Tengus, he might be in a little bit of a hurt here. Risky move, moving so far away here. Here are the Tengus looking to mount a counter attack. Maybe just at this stage, just camping the production, but the hero of the VX is trying to move on back as well. Taking out, for, ooh, almost taking the MIG out there, now going for the production, going for the airfield. Tanks really far out of position. A couple of twin blades do survive, are oh, still alive here. But the Tengus should be able to lift off and escape. Should really not be uh, sacrificing all these units at this stage, but with all these bullfogs, they can't really lift to the skies. Huge pick off, and maybe Overly, overly enthusiastic with those Tengus and with those uh, VXs there. But once again, MCV in a vulnerable position will indeed get picked off by these VXs. Decided to sell it instead. But now with this, uh, with this crane, we won't have too much of a problem in rebuilding in this game from here on out. VX is looking to try and get an opening. And the Tengu is getting a couple of uh, stray targets as well there. Peek has to be careful moving around the map like this. Doesn't want to be caught off in a base trade. And Pika can't be splitting off his units like this. The strongest together, they cannot be split up. But simply with the Tengu count, and I think zero. Only two Tengus do remain indeed. Three Tengus, I should say. But a collector does indeed fall. One of the VXs does indeed get infected there, will be forced to be uh, shot down. But is Dimon going for the MCV? He's not, he's still going for the Tengus. I'll collect the goods. He's in one every 33 seconds. And VX is also every 33 seconds. I think maybe the the unit count is low enough from uh, from Dimon now. But maybe his, uh, he's not very scary anymore. Now getting the repairs on the rest of his units. A 
couple of these VXs are now star rank. Very, very powerful units there. Definitely not too shabby. Definitely not to be taken lightly as well, because you can see how, how quickly they can pick off the MCBs in the, in the vehicles. Sputnik expanding this time around, though. Still maybe a bit of a risky move. Could try and maybe go to the top, hide an expansion, go up here. Because they're probably the most unlikely locations uh, that uh, Dimon is going to find. But at the same time, could easily defend by simply building a Tesla coil in the flat cannon. Simply having too much money in the bank, trying to get some collectors as well, which will help against uh, bullfrogs and terror drones. They're not useless in a fight. Hero of Flak Trooper managing to stay alive. Four force again picked up at the end there. Uh, why did he sell off the bullfrog? Why did he sell off the Sputnik? Get a turret. I don't think Pika knows just how powerful Soviet turrets are. How powerful Soviet static defense is, because if he did, I mean, he would be building turrets right now. This is what happens when you're off race. Sometimes you don't quite know how powerful the things are in your arsenal. But I think slowly but surely this game... It really, it really, it's really hard to say. Because if, if Dimon manages to sneak around the map, maybe he can pick up all the production. And may, maybe he can. It's not completely unheard of. It could happen. But at the same time, if, he, if a Pika makes his way towards his opponent's base, there's nothing there. It's only two structures. That will not take a long time to pick off. And being very cost effective with whatever whatever units he does have. Here with the Tengu's looking to pick, pick a fight with these uh, MiGs here. The X is also just looking to try and find us out. There is finally some static defense. There is finally the flat cannon. And that's just a Q-list location. Migs is constantly moving in and getting sacrificed here. As allies, you can move into situations like this because Apollos have a little bit more health. But the X is... But, uh, Migs are pretty much paper planes. So you can't be moving them anywhere near opponents anti air. I'm mixing up and getting a tsunami tank out. It's an unusual decision, I think, here. These are finally these must be depleted by now. Both have indeed been depleted. Likewise, both of these over here as well. One thing I would kind of like to see, because he's got extra collectors, he could just simply move one over to this refinery in mine, which is what he's doing. Get a full load. So Tengu's looking for an opening, does lose one. Now observation posts have an insane amount of health, and you can just see how much damage these VXs are doing. And this is exactly what Dimon is hoping for. He's hoping for some pathing issues, he's hoping that stray units get picked off, because he can still win the game, that's the thing. His army is very powerful. And with those tanks, the tanks are gone! There's only VX, there's only a couple of twin blades now, there's no more tanks remaining, only one now coming on the field. Please, Pika, build a turret. 
please. There we go. Finally, we get a Tesla coil. Question is, will Dimon be able to win the game before this really comes into fruition? Will he go for an MCV? He's going for an MCV. 3 minutes 19 to build this. This game has gone on for ages and he's just been on this one refinery all game. Now looking to try and finally bring it to a second refinery. Which seems insane. Barely staying alive there. Could easily swoop around and take the kill very shortly. This just shows how powerful Tengus and DXs are, if micro correctly. And the real power. Well, in them, really. It's just uh, by uh, finding these uh, faults, finding these weaknesses, and abusing them completely. Picking off the crane there, great pick off. Now, no more turrets are going to be coming in, coming out. And without that Tesla coil, Dimon's in a decent position. It's, it's weird to think so. But it's simply just because Pika is he's not playing safe enough versus this thing versus this uh, versus this army. There is another MCV now. But it's just another minute away until finally we're going to be seeing another M another MCV from the from the Empire, and at that time we're going to have point defense stones. He's going to have. He's going through the center. He's going for... Really? He's going for robotic assembly? I can't believe that. It's not the best... Uh... Oh! Orbital downpour coming down. Getting a lot of damage on that refinery there. I think it's orbital downpour, the big one. Yes. Not quite picking it off. But I mean, a couple of other units, maybe a twin blade coming around the side, could maybe pick that off. This ref this uh, MCV could not get out too soon. He doesn't even have that much money. I don't know if he's intentionally mining from all these nodes around the side to just get the full load, or whether it's just something that happens to be happening or happening automatically. But I do like it. There is finally we're seeing an MCV from the Empire. See all these units collate in the center. Point defense drones come out. Now the mining has stopped. He will I think he's seen the MCV with that. He's seen the MCV. That is huge. Now he knows that the Demon is actually not trying to be overly aggressive. He's looking to draw out the game. And we're seeing the Empire actually be in power for, us to, for actually one time in the game. He's actually going to have power. So here we are, we are back. And uh, hopefully the game isn't just going to end right now. As we see the units start to move across the map. VXs and Tengus making their way across. Is now the MCV looking to maybe expand himself. The first MCV expansion that we will have seen in this entire game, and how long has this game lasted? So the airfield might indeed be falling here from this uh, final squadron. There indeed it goes. Honorable Discharge doing some extra damage there. I'm not really sure what the, the name of that final, the highest uh, final squadron is. Final squadron Omega. They really, th they really uh, splashed out with the name in there. But it looks like maybe we're going to be seeing a second refinery out of Dimon. Looking to try and get further into the game, but, I mean... Is it really worth getting this refinery now? There's not really that much that much credits really remaining there. He might as well have been mining from the top from all this time. Mining from the refineries which are quite further away. He's been mining from here a bit. But the Turodon coming on out, looking to get the infection. 
But there's so many, there's so many collectors. I mean, killing a single collector isn't going to really harm the Empire player at all. So we it's now up to four refineries. Pretty safe in this as well. But the VXs, the Tengus, now with point defense drones, again looking to be aggressive. It's a couple of tanks at the top might be able to get some damage done as there isn't a Tesla coil. A good infection there does thwart it in its tracks. Starting the engagement at the top here. The tanks maybe not going to be able to get a huge amount of damage done. Maybe not even kill a collector. I mean, that turret on infection could have been avoided, but nevertheless, collector in a little bit of trouble here. Still, only. I mean, to be honest, he could sell the mecha there to get a little bit of money. It would give him a thousand credits, and you. Give him 500 credits, I mean. 500,000? I think it's a thousand, yeah. And you would be able to rebuild this war factory faster. MCV, vulnerable once again. Not deciding to go for it as he's running circles around his army. It's well out of position. Now going for the production, going for this war factory, going maybe going for the crane as well. Looking to get a lot of damage done. Forces the Bullfrogs to stay back for a short amount of time as well. As he gets a lot of damage done. Taking off the infrastructure, picking off this war factory. Dimon finding an opening. There's no MIGs out. No anti-air in the main base, which he really could have used before. He's starts to now pick off this uh, uh, it's a super reactor. Moving out after having picked off that one target there. Doesn't want to overcommit. Airfield now having been re be rebuilt in the water there. Ooh, nice save with that VX. Moves over to the high ground. A way of harm. Now the MIG come in. Is forced back. Punch defense swarms out once again. Not, uh, not halting on this aggression. A couple of the bullfrogs get caught out of position. One goes down. Two goes down. Second Foley falling very shortly. And if all these bullfrogs fall, there's not really that much anti-air once again. He could lift up all of these VXs and go for extra aggression. Here we go. Go for the second super reactor. I'm getting a lot of damage on it. Really has to be careful. As this uh, tank, first tank does indeed go down. Second tank, oh! Where did that anti air come from? Are these flat troopers in the garrison? Yes, there are. Very sneaky but nice move out of Pika there. Hiding them away and picking off the entire army out of Demon. That was a huge pick off, and now without that army, without any economy, this might just be game. Finally, Pika might have found an opening. And that was a very smart move. Sneaky move. Think feigning. Not having anti air, and of course having the flat cannon, flat cannon there as well. Being very safe for once in this game. And definitely paying off. And with these remainder, this small remainder of units Dimon. getting picked off, Dimon finally forced to retreat. A valiant effort on the, such a low econ, but not quite being enough. Piga taking the win. Thirty-one minute game. That's insane. Hello and welcome to game number four here of the finals of this uh, 2018 February Ladder Wars. On the left of the map, we have the Yellow Empire player. It is Demon. And on the right, the Blue Soviets player. Both players are facing the Blue Soviets this time. It's going to be Pika. Starting off with a two barracks opener, looking to take both these oil derricks. And uh, not overly aggressive on the infantry this time, out of uh, out of Demon. Only going for the one. A slight scout at the top, maybe looking to be pesky. But I can't imagine it being too big of an issue for uh, for Pika here, taking both the older. Because of course, the way I really do this is to use this as a foothold, and this as a foot... Oh, hang on a second, a little bit of lag once again. Okay, so welcome back. Um, we are now back into where we were, more or less where we were before. Restarting the replay. I'm just pretty much saying, I was surprised to see the fact that it was a two racks opener and the Soviet player decides to destroy the oil derricks. It's safe, it's a safe enough a location to go for the captures, but this is a huge investment in infantry without any 
income to back it up. So, really not liking the opening out of uh, out of Pika. Could have easily gone for both those captures there, but instead has paid a lot of money on this infantry and hasn't really got any sort of benefit from it. He's destroyed the Alderix, but he hasn't got them. So he has the infantry now, and the, yes, he can use them to defend. He can put a few uh, units in these garrisons here to hold the fort for the time being, maybe even take the centre with some conscripts. But for the most part, they're not going to be very useful at this stage in the game. So Dimon has the Mechabee up now. Uh, has a few units, has this uh, dojo as well. Not going to be overly useful at this stage in the game. Maybe just uh, could be used to wall in this refinery for a short amount of time, delaying the capture as long as he could. Maybe just scout the water. A few options. Whoa. Stingray. That is unexpected. But kind of makes a bit of sense. Stingray is, of course, on this map. Uh, can abuse the water path. But with the, with the ability to easily uh, defend these refineries with these garrisons, it's going to be difficult for him to make his way into his opponent's base. It would in a, in a normal situation, but luckily for him, they haven't been scout this hasn't been scouted and these have not been taken. So the Stingray will be able to make its way into the base and might be able to wreak quite a bit of havoc. Third refinery now coming out, out of Pika. As the Bullfrog makes its way onto the field to try and defend this Stingray as it comes out. Tier 2 on the field, of course, as well, for the Empire player. And the Stingray not committing, it's just simply trying to pick off any uh, water units. As the Naval, Naval Corps comes on out, barely avoiding that, uh, forgotten what the ability is called, Tesla Surge. Which we probably will indeed be seeing this Naval Yard fall in the near future. A couple of these. Uh, oh, he's going to keep it alive. Nice micro of dim on there. He's running circles around his naval yard just about keeping it alive. And now going for the war factory in his main base. No more naval yard has sold that off, so we're not going to be seeing any more stingrays. There's a slight bit of aggression at the start, but not overly committing to it. So a couple of Tsunami tanks moving on forward, and the Yari mini-sub as well. But the Yari mini-sub will be met with this Tesla core, so we shouldn't really get too much damage done. Just getting up in time to defend. Instantly turning on back as well. Maybe there might be a sweet spot around about here, where you could attack this Super Reactor. I'm not quite sure, though. Yes, indeed, it looks like there is, if he wants to come in and attack. But good defence with this garrison over here, of course, defending uh, very nicely against both these Tsunami tanks. Could really get a on bringing one down to try and deal with this uh, Yari mini-sub here. Should be able to deal with it without too many issues. Of course, you might be thinking that the Tesla call is pretty much useless at this stage, but it's not. Because it pretty much it it only allows you to attack from these small locations. I mean, he could have suicided there and killed the Terrorborn, but I don't think he was really paying attention. Nevertheless, small amount of conscripts doing a little bit of chip damage against one of the collectors here on the left of the map, but will indeed be picked off before he goes on the red health, so it's not too bad from it there. Dimon, of course, now on uh, three refineries in the center with this barracks for good measure as well, should be able to create a decent foothold there. But a couple of tanks trying to force him back, trying to uh, keep the position for himself. One of the Terradons does indeed go down, but with low health Terradon, quite difficult to micro there, and force was uh, indeed picked off. Of course, being on low health makes it slower, which is really one of the advantages, one of the key uh, strengths of Terradons. But now with this uh, water position there, uh, Secured, now moving to the centre with his MCV as well, is Pika. Tengu's trying to find an opening in the main base, but not able to. Of course, his uh, garrison's still in still in play, still getting quite a lot of uh, 
effectiveness there. With this desolator airstrike, looking to control the sender here, taking taking the uh, Empire's strength away from him. Of course, if these conscripts can take over the garrison later on, he'll be able to use his foothold as well. So Barracks instantly comes out, looking to try and do this. So three refineries currently out from both players. Equal game economically. I was trying to move in maybe a little bit preemptively, now coming on in as well. Instantly going for the garrison, like I was saying. Both of them trying to create, trying to get it. It looks like the Empire player will just about get it. So he has to retreat. With all these tank pushes coming on in now as well. Body blocking with the tanks, stopping the tanks from retreating. Gets two quick picks offs, pick offs, and the third one will indeed go off as well. Another one comes towards the centre of the MCV in a world of hurt as well. Damon in great shape, slowly picking up the, the tank pushes in the centre with this with this conscript with the Molotovs. But it's not quite fast enough, and it should indeed just about be taken out. P get forced back. Great micro in the centre from Damon there. Forcing back the Soviets and keeping the foothold in the centre. With more and more tanks and infantry flowing on forward, it's going to be difficult for the Soviets to really make use of this. I think he's a little bit unsure about what to do, what, how the best way to engage with his army is. Moving in with the MCV, MCV hoping for crosses but with no terror drone. It's going to be difficult to really get anything to really happen here. Sickle coming in, maybe for a toxic corrosion. But the MCV is not deployed. There it goes. But it didn't really get the money shot that he was hoping for. MCV indeed going to die here. Could have sold it off for extra credits, but, you know. It doesn't really matter at the end. I think the game is pretty much over at this stage. It is three refineries apiece. But with this huge army coming on forward, and, and just a war factory, there's no... There's no uh, Barracks out and play. Tank buses are going to wreak havoc. Moving on forward now, forcing the army to move on back. Single bear was still out and play, instantly gets picked off. Tanks coming in for the crushes, it's not going to work as the tanks body blocking for the tank buses. And there you go. Dimon just rolling on forward, ties up the series 2 2. Hello and welcome to game number 5 here. This time on industrial strength, and on the left of the map we have the blue Soviets player. It is Kika. And on the top right we have the yellow Empire. It is Empire. Demon as Empire. So I was right in this time around. We're going to see a lot of infantry, two barracks at least from the Soviets to start with. It's a map where you can indeed see even three refined three barracks from the Soviets early on. This time I think it's just going to be two. Uh, but four dojos out of the Empire player. Hiding two at the side. Maybe uh, maybe trying to go for a sneaky push with infantry later on. Or maybe something else entirely. It's a little bit difficult to say. Two of them going around the left. Seemingly unnecessary detour. But it does going for both the refineries behind it as well here. Lots of Imperial Warriors and two dojos for crush capabilities. Moving on forward. Looking to get a presence on the map. But not unfortunately for him, able to crush this uh, engineer there. Still staying alive, but will probably get taken out by these Imperial Warriors. That's a good pick off from the Empire player there. Not able to capture any of the older exits there. Building another one, maybe going for the one on the right. But the engineer should be able to get the capture on the left without too many issues there. Going into the war factory behind this, we are not seeing a capture of this garage quite yet, but with the position of these dojos, it's looking likely that it's definitely going to be on the cards for Dimon. A couple of conscripts are out there, however, so they maybe might be able to get the kill. Good pick off there. <coughs> now going into that mecha bit. <coughs> Second barracks coming on out once again, desperately trying to get the center, trying to take this uh, this garage. But the engineer of Pika still hasn't managed to get this capture that he desperately so needs at this point in time. 
Terodron coming on now. Should be able to secure the center garage. Now looking to get captured by the Soviet player. And good, uh, good hold there for the Soviets. Now with his garage, of course, he's going to be able to move on forward. And he is indeed going for an MCV push. No walls, however, so he's uh, not going to be in the best defense during all of this. But looking to move on forward with his MCV, with his sickles, getting repairs, and his MCV, of course, getting repairs as well. It's going to be a di very difficult position to hold, very difficult army to hold against as the Soviets. Oh, good pick up once again with the engineer. Conscript is sneakily clearing out these garrisons. Does w not want these uh, Imperial Warriors in play. Sickle makes its way on forward. Forces out a turret in defense. But the Sickle can easily just jump out and retreat. Now the MCV isn't moving on forward for the push quite yet. He's being very hesitant and he's only going for the oil directs. Really the power in this is just the, the the instant threat of the MCV coming on forward. And now it seems like maybe it's a little bit too late. Maybe the time where this MCV push could have been most powerful has ended. Yes, there's still a little bit of pressure at the front with a couple of sickles. But not too much damage being done. Force out a couple of these turrets. And yes, Dimon is on the defensive. But uh, if a super reactor has been built in this main base, which it is. Maybe some Tesla calls in the front line as well. Or maybe just going into tanks behind it, some bullfrogs. I think this has mainly been held. So good defense out of, Dim out of Dimon there. Barracks once again out. Seems like he's wanting to recap this uh, the garage and use it to his own advantage instead of the Soviets. But luckily for him, he's going to scout down here and sees that the Soviets are still only on two refineries. So the econ economic game is actually in his favour with this older on the left. Now trying to change it, so I've gone with for this barracks for the recapture. Demont trying to break on out. Again, just verifying that these refineries have not been taken. He will be very happy to see all of this. So the dojo going for a, an unusual path. I'm not really sure what the aim is here. Maybe just hiding it at this stage? Trying to sneak around the side, maybe. But it's going to be a long time before we really see any uh, anything happen from that there. Let's continue with these uh, VXs this game. VXs and tanks for this point. A couple of Tengus are, I think actually one died, so it's only on one Tengu at this stage. And the Soviets now moving on back to try and get this third refinery. Both, both oil dogs are now in his possession. He has good map vision with his conscripts and the garrisons. And the garage, uh, importantly, as well. So Pika, so far, in great shape. <laughs> Sick lad is getting a little bit of vision. Allowing him to move on forward with this orbital drop. Good wall in from... Uh, him on there, just about keeping it alive on the tiniest scrap of health. But it seems like now Dimon is uh, safe and he's perfectly content to move on out, try and break on out, try and move into a position where he's more comfortable in the game. But the dojo, still moving on forward, might be able to get a lucky uh, deployment here, and maybe a capture on this refinery if he's not too, if he's uh, if Pika isn't too careful. He's going to be very happy to see what he sees here. And the dojo now coming on is he going to is he going to get a deployment?
Pterodon gets the infection there, so we're not going to see any crazy shenanigans over there, unfortunately. Tengu's now joining the party as well. Don't quite get the Pterodon, but the Collector does like it's look like indeed like it's going to fall. VX is now splitting up, picking off both of these older eggs. Now the garage, of course, has died as well. So not going for that recapture in the end. Just simply taking them out of harm's way, taking them out of the opponent's possession. But being on three of Radwees versus two, Demont still has the economic disadvantage. He has to be very cost effective, and we have seen very cost effective trades from him with Tengu VX in especially Cabana Republic in this uh, series so far. So it's really going to come down to the micro. And with only three bullfrogs, it might be quite difficult to really take a good engagement. Tegu's VX is moving on around the map, trying to sneak around, trying to find an opening. Because now a flat cannon coming on out, realising that he's going to need anti-air in his main base. Bullfrogs should be able to get back in time. But the Tengu is looking to find a good position to defend here. Tanks also making their way back, and this should be more or less defended. Trying to pick off the Bullfrogs, or trying to find a way to re-lift off into the skies. With safety, I should say. Because, of course, if he gets cornered, these Bullfrogs, these, uh, bullfrogs might, might just wreak havoc. But, of course, the Tengu is just about to save the day for these VXs. VXs have managed to make their way out. So, nice defense out of uh, Pika there. While both collectors have been put into low health, they are still alive. And he killed a lot more units than he lost in that engagement. Orbital drop coming out once again. We'll probably get a collector. Oh, barely staying alive there. really do with a healing though. But the MCV out of Dimon moving over to the water here on the left. Might get uh, caught off guard by a Turodon if he's not careful. But the Tengu is just continuously just moving across the map trying to find an opening. Of course in the water without an airfield it's, it's difficult for Soviets to really defend it. What he's trying to do is with, with, with a Tesla call but in this time taking a lot of damage on his MCV. VX is also maybe joining the party as well in the water because of course only the bullfrogs. It's going to be difficult to defend this with the, if, with the Tengus harassing them. MCV in a little bit of trouble here. Really has to retreat. Not going to have time for this uh, flat cannon to actually get up in time. And this MCV does indeed look like it's going to fall. So great pick off out of Dimon there. And here indeed is that turtle that I was talking about before. And there's not really that much to defend this MCV at this stage in the game. Brings in an extra sickle there. Does finally get those final shots off on that collector. And get some extra damage in at the top as well. But the Tengu's and the is just posturing at this stage, trying to find a good place to fight. While the Terror Drone, maybe on a Q move, did move out of position. So collector off the line there. Demon's economy not in great shape, but if he can rebuild this, not too bad either. Having killed the MCV, his army, as we've seen before, is very powerful. It's definitely not something to be taken lightly. But this heavy tank count, once again moving on forward. Really could split off a couple of tanks, move into his opponent's base with a bullfrog as well and just get a little bit of harassment in while his opponent's out of position. But the Tengu is moving on forward, camping the airfield. The VX is just trying to just find straight targets as well, picking off one of the garrisons. Tanks coming in for some harassment at the same time as well. 
Forcing one of the collectors offline might not get the kill. But just being pesky. Just being an annoyance. As now the VX has come on forward. Migs are out in play, however, so if he's not careful, these could get picked apart. Going for the airfield, but of course, as I've said, crit well, Migs are out in abundance now. But keeping three of these alive, maybe two survive. Going for this airfield, this is indeed goes down. Where are the bullfrogs? And if the crane falls as well, it's going to be very little chance for, for Beaker to come back into this game. All he really has, production-wise, is this, is this war factory. And if this goes down, that's going to be it. Pretty much forces uh, Pika to stay on the, offense, on the defensive for the remainder of this game. As these tankers coming forward, flying above all these bullfrogs, taking a lot of damage there. P picking up all the makes in the process. Bullfrogs taking a little bit of damage. <coughs> he takes a few of them out in the process. VX is trying to find a way into the main base as all these bullfrogs are out of position. Moves on forward. Going for the barracks, it seems. But the garrison will, for the moment, at least save the day. Attempted uh, Sputnik harassment on the right there. But without the crane, unable to rebuild there. Tanks and bullfrogs moving out once again. But the VX is only in only in a low count. Tengu is not on a very high count really either. <clears throat> like I, and like I said before, a couple of uh, a couple of stray tanks moving on forward as is, as the Empire player is out of position in his own main base could wreak havoc against his economy. So point defense zones out once again and lifts off, looking to once again just move over to his opponent's side of the map. Peek this side in position to potentially get some damage in on his, of his own, but sees this as he moves across. Just moving back to defend. <coughs> Terradon Snail still sneakily managed to find a way to survive those te that Tengu onslaught. Oh, but here he comes on back. Looks to save the day, realising that there's potentially that Terradon up there. The VX is just coming on forward behind this as well. We're keeping up the harassment here. There's no twin blades, I don't think. No air on the field at all. As his VX has come on forward once again. Has rebuilt this MCV. But this Tingu will indeed go down. So stunning one of the Tingus at the top there. Potentially go over and pick that off. Allowing him to securely go for this third refinery. Because at the moment, with his MCV, he's able to be to rebuild these refineries in the water on the right. But a couple of bullfrogs get caught out of position here. Tengu's getting a great catch there. Without the anti-air in position. These VXs might have free reign. Just come over and wreak havoc in this main base here right now. Third bullfrog now comes out on the field. But will it be enough to defend? Comes on forward twice when Gigi's uh, Bullfox head on. One of them does indeed go down. Second one in low health does indeed get picked off. Third one in low health has escaped. But another one has just about came out. Will it manage to get the damage off? So only one Bullfox remains. But the anti air is still alive. The dream is not dead for the Soviets. And with his extra refinery behind this as well, he might just be getting in good shape. Of course, during all this, Dimon is still only on two refineries. Main base refineries as well. Getting low in a uh, in abundance as well. In a uh, yield, I should say. Tanks and the Bullfogs continue to rebuild. And the airfield... Where was the airfield? I thought it was being rebuilt. There, no, it's not. Fifth refinery first. Before all of this. But finally, looking to pick it off. <coughs> oh, the second turret one. Will it get the lucky shot off? No, it won't. But coming out once again, finding these refineries in the water. Now it's going for a couple of flat cannons. 
maybe realizing that uh, he really needs to defend on the ground. So a Tesla car would have been not unnoticed as well. So going for this one now. As finally the tanks and bullfrogs move on forward. Tengu's out of position here. The X's are in play. But they're not going to be very powerful. Unless it simply just forces the entire Soviet army back once again. This time, Pika realizing that the tanks are actually quite powerful. Moves on forward. Maybe this simply goes for the super maybe this goes for the Mecha Bay. It looks like maybe it's going to be a base trade out of the Empire player, however, though. As you realize you cannot attack this army head on. with this nice uh, flat cannon there should be able to save the day and it really this engagement is pretty much impossible for the Empire now nice infection going for the high health one going for the high uh, the star rank one as well as the mecha bay falls the finery should be falling shortly as well Pika coming back and making himself in great shape going for the battle lab in the water as well nice defensive location nice defensive Nice defensive position as the Empire now forced back onto one refinery. The difference is between this one and game number three, I think, on Command Republic is there's a lot of static defense out this time. A couple of turrets in the water, flat cannon in the main base. It's going to be difficult for those VXs coming across the map to really get the damage done that they need to. While not impossible, it will be difficult. Going for the Tesla call now. Should really be able to take it out. The second one coming up behind us as well. There indeed it goes. Going for the battle in the main base instead. Still only on one refinery though. They are not looking to rebuild this quite yet. We can really just end the game right here, right now. But he can't really do that. He can only really harass the water. If he goes to the main base, his army is going to get obliterated. Good to go for one of the, of the exes there. Second one just about surviving, but the Turidon should be able to clean this up. you worried just about saving me at the last moment there so the water base should indeed fall thankful for the surprise coming on out now though was indeed a surprise for the Empire player for the Soviet player I should say but killing off a tank not too bad will need a little bit more damage though lifting off once again trying to get some sneaky harassment in But it might not indeed be game ending. Third, second finally now coming on out in the water. But good scouting from this uh, conscript here. Just allowing him to move on forward. And use some of these protocols. So we get here going for the right of the centre path. After taking this cash bounty. Doing huge damage to this refinery. Super weapon out in play, tier three out in play. It's going to be pretty much an impossible impossibility for Dimon to come back, but he's not quite giving up yet. All it takes is a small mistake, small miss micro from the Soviets, and it could turn around, albeit unlikely at this stage, could happen. So this V4 coming on around, looking to get the final shot off on this refinery. To put his opponent back on that single refinery economy. These games have been going on quite long. These these may, uh, all nodes have been depleting. This one over here, of course, now depleted. The second one, just depleting as, we, as we're looking at it right now. And here goes the refinery. Cooler soap now coming out as well, and there's just nothing to defend in the water. 
if he builds the Yawi mini subs, he's not going to be able to have cost effective trades against cooler subs with good micro, and I think he probably realizes this at this stage. But again, it's a little bit of lag. Which is a bit unfortunate. But pretty much, I'm expecting this game to end very shortly anyway. Once these are cooler subs make their way across the map. And maybe even if it lasts long enough for the vacuum imploder, that should be the nail in the coffin. Tengu's drop once again, trying to get some extra harassment in, pick off a collector. They're going for the refinery as well. And might just be able to actually get it. Trying to keep it all We might actually be seeing well. some Naginata cruisers. That'd be a great. Yes, we are indeed Naginata cruisers. That's a that's some that's a unit that we almost never see in the game. It's very powerful. It's it's very good against cooler subs as well. Simply uh, for not only simply the reason that uh, they're very powerful, but they're able to easily go back and repair something that uh, cooler subs are not able to do. And they do just simply win out in a, a simple one on one. One on one fight, as you can see. So, more and more kills of making their way across the map. But the Snagging Out of did indeed survive. So, rebuilding this refinery on the right. And the super weapon is ticking down, only three minutes remaining on it. It's going to be very difficult for the Empire player to really survive if a super weapon shot comes off, if a good super weapon shot comes out. And to be honest, he doesn't even really need to kill the army. If he, does, if he uses the vacuum imploder here, kills both the collectors, he's going to have to force something to sell off. Another Akula sub comes out once again. There's a little bit of damage on one of the refineries, but it doesn't look like he's actually going to get the kill. Maybe some ultra torpedoes from this one will finish the job. And there we go. So three refineries now versus one refinery out of the Empire player. Tenku's coming around once again, trying to find an opening, and indeed just come in once again just to harass this refinery. This third refinery out of Pika is not doing a lot of work really at this stage. A turret on the right would not go unnoticed. So cool. So looking to try and pick something off. The second family has now indeed been rebuilt. And is this indeed what we're going to be seeing? Is it Shoguns? We're going to be seeing Shoguns tier 3 now coming out from this naval yard. He has the anti-air support with these with these uh, Tengus. There's nothing to say, he can't simply just go over and try and now go into this tier three. Sputnik coming out once again, trying to move over to the water, not real, not try, not uh, attempting to go over with his MCV because he's had a little bit of a, a bad run in with Tengus and VXs in the past with those when trying to move out too far. The issue here is, his main base has been depleted. All of his ma all of his refineries that are really mining don't have a lot of income. While Demon has two fresh ore nodes and he's getting a lot of money from them. Despite only being on two refineries, he has a better income than the Empire player. Which is weird to think. Tengu's coming in once again looking to get some harassment in. But the Akula subs continuously coming on out. Only 30 seconds do remain. It's going to come down to the super weapon shot. This could make or break Pika. If he manages to get all of these techniques right away, that could end the game. If he gets both these collectors and the Shogun, that could end the game. If he gets nothing, maybe this Shogun has enough time to come out and actually deal the damage that he so desperately needs to do. A lot of damage on this refinery. It might indeed fall. A couple of shotgun blasts, maybe even just one. Should be able to finish the job there. Good mixing in of this uh, VX here, just having an extra little bit of support with this Naginata cruiser. 
engineer coming out. Does get the repair in the last moment there. And here is the vacuum imploder. Not actually getting the second collector. But does indeed get one of the refineries and orbital downpour coming out to finish up this refine this uh naval yard. Will the refinery get collateral damage in this as well? Oh, the MCV falls! But the naval yard stays alive. And that is big. With this, you can still build these tech units. Tank users continuously moving around the map. And of course, with the naval yard, you can also get repairs. You can keep this Shogun alive. If that dies, that would have been it. Luckily, paying attention there and going in for that repair at the last possible moment. And the Tengu is coming back for repairs as well. If you got both of the refineries... I, I do feel, if you just simply went there with the super weapon and the Obel Dampo, maybe he would be able, to, be able to kill both. And that would have been it. For getting the MCV instead. It's also very powerful. The Shogun is out. I don't know if he's going to be able to win the game with it though. Natasha, oh, Natasha's out. The only, there's only one thing that can really win the game for, for Dimon here. And that's just Shogun. If that's because pilot snipes, that's game. At the same time, if nothing's in, in position to stop Natasha from just simply uh, shooting down his naval yard, that is also game. This is going to be very, very difficult for Dimon, but it's not impossible. Terodorn coming on down, looking to try and stun this Shogun in place. Natasha looking to try and get the stun up, but Tengu are out in play, are looking to try and stop this from happening. Cooler sub out once again. Does get picked off, does get camped by these two Naganak cruisers. Tier 3 has indeed been picked off there. Where is Natasha? So this MCV at this stage, he doesn't need to stay here. He can move over to his opponent's side of the map, take these refineries, the ones which actually have healthy, uh, well one of them actually has a healthy amount of ore in. But he's not deciding to move, he's staying in his own main base. Natasha not getting the Palestine buff yet, but he's in a great position to do so. She, I should say. Coming in up now, Tengu's looking to try and pick it up beforehand though. Where's the pilot snipe? I was sure that was going to get sniped there. But now that's trying once again. I think he was trying to pick it up in the skies. He's not able to. Only three minutes once again before the super weapon, super weapon fire again. Natasha in a little bit of trouble. Can it get into safety of a, of a bullfrog here? It doesn't look like it will. And he's not moving with his MCV. He's staying in this uh, precarious location. He doesn't need to stay here. He can move to safety. Stingray is also out as well. This could move across the map. And potentially, I don't think he knows about the Stingray. This could deal devastating damage on his opponent. Very cleverly from uh, Dimon here. Keeping this uh, single VX back. Just in case something manages to make its way in. An infection on this Shogun will be the end of this attack. But I don't think it's going to actually allow this to happen. Super Reactor under a lot of... Th oh, there's a Super Reactor zone. There's going to be no power for the Super Weapon. 20 Blade now out in play. An Engineer could also win this game for him. There's so many options for Pika at this stage, but he's not doing any of them. He's in the centre of the map, building the, su the Super Reactor in the centre, out of harm's way from the Shoguns, at least for now. Twinblade trying to come in and get the, the damage off. But the Stingray, instead of going towards the economy, just going for these units here. And he's not going to be able to get the damage off that he needs to. Unfortunately, a bit of a waste of that Shogun there. A waste of that uh, Stingray. Pika's economy isn't very great. He's trying to build up some, uh, some of these Twinblades. 
with which he could potentially end the game. If he moves across the map with a few of these bullfrogs and the twin blades, he might just be able to do it. But he's trying to get this power up. He's trying to be able to use this this uh, super weapon. The Shogun, all it has to do is focus this down, and it might be the end of it. But with the crane building this, Orbital Downport comes out once again. Could have been used to end the game again. Orbital Downport on these structures with a couple of twin blade shots would have been great. Finally, the Twin Blades come on forward, and there's no anti air in position. The Bullfogs also join the party as well. And he's not looking to try and destroy this super weapon yet. He knows that he's still got a minute, so he can focus on the priority targets first. And if he can take out the economy, maybe that'll just simply be it. The Collector is now being focused down, should be dropping in the next few moments. MCV has been rebuilt, giving him power to produce from this uh, naval yard. Now, Oh, so now he's going to be seeing the uh, C-Wing, probably. And there we go. VX managing to find a few of these tanks unprotected. The Bullfogs now trying to join the party once again. 25 seconds remaining, but it's dying. It's not going to survive that long. Well, the thing is not here either. But he's not focusing it down anymore. Twin Blades looking to try and get this, uh, take it off before it actually gets the final shots off. I don't think it's going to be enough. I th actually, it might. Five seconds. Can you just kill the Shogun with it? One second. Zero seconds. He can use it. Did he use it? Yes, he did. Two Naganata cruisers have been used there. Third one. Third one dies as well. Okay, so this this just got interesting. <laughs> I say it just got interesting. It's been interesting for quite a little while. But Airfield's still alive in the centre. Starting to focus down this refinery. Not much economy left in this game at all. Tanks looking to try and save this. But with the Shogun trying to focus it down. And on will discharge damage. It might just simply be too much. This refinery is crucial for the Soviet players. Still mining, despite all of this. Mig looking to try and get a final shot off. Not quite getting a kill. Does he have a crane? I don't think he does. Tankbuster Surprise coming out once again in the main base. His old main base, I should say. Our balloon bombs looks to come on in and force the MCV out of position. Good Tankbuster Micro and this MCV might indeed just simply fall here. Tanks coming out, trying to get some crushes, trying to save the MCV. Will it be enough? A couple of more bombs, and this might indeed just go down. This is going to be very, very close. I think it's more or less just about to survive. But does he have a Tengu in the sky? A couple of Tengus could come in and get the final shots off. A single Tengu could sacrifice his life for the greater good and pick off this MCV right now. And he would not go unnoticed. He would be remembered for the ages. I don't think he's going for it. Shogun trying to find an opening, trying to reach far enough, but he's not quite got that length on him. And simply, in the stage that somehow this game has gone to, it looks like, somehow, Dimon is in the lead? He has two refineries, he has two decently uh, fresh refineries as well. He has a tier 3 naval yard. And he has his MCV. Dimon. I mean, Pika. He's got this barely mining refinery. Which is now being harassed and probably going to get taken out. No extra economy behind this. And no real way of getting to the water. And, you know, I was just saying... Could we just see a super weapon out of the Soviet, out of the Empire player? I think we are going to see one. Since the mainframe comes on out, we might just be seeing a decimator. Purely safe in the water, the Shogun giving him a lot of space. Final squadron 
That's the, the first final squadron coming on. I'll just get a little bit of chip damage. Forcing, if nothing else, repairs. Which are expensive for someone who doesn't have any money. Nice spotting with this uh, Tengu, I should say, as well. Giving them the extra map vision. Out of harm's way. Oh, so, despite not even mining at full capacity, with his depleted on order, he's already on red health as well. He should probably just uh, crush a couple of these tanks in the crane. Get some money and try and go from there. So now we can potentially rebuild something, but this, this collector's going to fall. Saran Tengu versus the collector on no, almost no health. That doesn't stand a chance. Attempting to try and rebuild something. Destroying the walls so he can actually get rid of some map vision. Try and hide this refinery if you can. The orbital downpour comes out once again. That's a lot of damage there. All 10 protocols have been taken from Pika. Dimon. In the same boat. And Pika has been defeated. Dimon takes the win in that game. As he realises he can't do enough damage against the refinery because he cannot kill them off anymore. And he's stuck trying to rebuild in his main base, in his old main, in his opponent's main base. Old main base. And that was just simply it. Excellent comeback from Dimon. And Seriously, well played. Great, great, great play from both sides. But seriously, excellent comeback. That's 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 going to be a very good game for anyone to watch. I would definitely recommend that game for the future for many people to watch. Anyway, well played. We've still got more games to come, so don't go anywhere. Game number six coming up. Hello and welcome to game number six here in the finals of this 2018 February Lud Wars. On the left of Fire Island here, we have the Yellow Empire player. It is Dimon. Versus the blue Soviets at the top right of the map. It is Pika. So game number five was definitely one for the ages there. And uh, somehow Dimon managed to take the win. So it's going to be Pika's map of choice. And starting off with a Barracks. Dimon, four dojo start, looking to go for both these oil lyrics at the start of the game. And shouldn't have an overly difficult amount of time in getting them. <clears throat> With this many dojos, it's pretty much guaranteed. Trying to go in for some of these crushes. Picks off one of the dojo calls very early on. And the second one comes in and also gets picked up as well. But the engineer, a little bit behind, should still safely be able to get this oil derrick. And not deciding to commit to it, so we're only going for the Imperial Warriors here, not actually looking to go for the quick capture of this oil derrick, only going for the one on the right. So, decent defense out of Dimon for the time being. Going into this, into this uh, war factory now. First time, I think, in a series that he's gone for this, uh, this build right now. Which is uh, just mixing up the strategies quite a bit. <clears throat> now going for the Mecha Bay behind this as well. So just trying to get these Tengus out as soon as he can. Not going for any crazy sort of 3 refinery build, which would, to be honest, never work on a map like this. <clears throat> Terror Drone now manages to find a... Uh, a dojo core in the centre of the map, completely unprotected, so goes for the quick infection there. <coughs> and manages to destroy this oil derrick on the left. Takes out the constant trickle of money for at least the main of this game. And to be honest, at most the main of this game. <coughs> so unfortunately I'm starting to lose my voice a little bit after that last game. This has lasted quite a long time. <clears throat> so sorry if I'm just uh, clearing my throat quite a bit.
So tier two now out, and the super reactor is, and the uh, war factory as well. So going for a couple of tanks, starting to break on forward, and maybe just to look to destroy this Alderic for the time being with a little bit of bullfog support, probably. As tier two already out from the Empire player as well, as he's looking to probably go for his third refinery very shortly as well. There it is. <coughs> Imperial Warrior is getting a scout out. Finding out what his opponent's doing. We'll see exactly what's going on. Sees it move on forward with the MCV. Sees both refineries defended by Flax. Sees the build. Full on scout from him there. Let's be careful, this infection. Uh, this uh, collector might just, it probably will just get infected. I don't think there's a way you can stop it at this stage. Might as well have just got whatever money he could in the meantime. As the tank comes out to try and save the day. So good infection, good harassment out of Dimo, out of uh, Pika for the time being. I keep looking at the Soviet player and thinking that's Dimon, but it's just not so. Both players off racing can get a little bit confusing. So Pika on the right, looking to recapture that oil derrick on over there. But the tsunami tank might have something to say about that. Nice, he's just pick, bringing in that tur that uh, turret on there to save the day at the last moment in the conscope just to try and finish the job. Airfield now coming on out as he's looking to try and get some twin blades out in play. Trying to get a mobile army, trying to get some freedom on the map. As the first Tengu starts to just fly on forward and try and find an opening. Not wanting to commit to anything at this stage in the game though. Risky play from that uh, turret on there, but just managing to pick up that Imperial Warrior in time. Turret on drop is what we're going to be seeing this time around. It's a way to make use of some uh, turret drones which may otherwise be pretty much useless in the game, considering the fact that it almost has no health. Might be able to still make its way into this game and be helpful. So both are getting a little bit too close there. Does indeed get picked off. Did the Twin Blades die? I think the Twin Blades might have died. Good pick off. Mig comes in a little bit too close, so cannot get repairs quite yet, so it doesn't want to be wasting its health. Pika now going for his fourth final in the water, and just making sure he can just deny these scouts, because Pika is moving on in, trying to see exactly what his opponent is doing. Doesn't really want to allow this. <coughs> of course, Mig's just scouting around as well, trying to give him a full, a full information of exactly what's going on in this game. He wants to be fully prepared for anything that, pe that Dimon can throw at him. And now moving on forward again, maybe going for fast five refineries. Changing his mind, I think. Maybe thinking that was a bit too greedy. Seeing the army and thinking, yes, I need a barracks. Go out of position with those MiGs there. Two indeed do, do go down. Good use of these uh, Tengu stuff are just picking off these uh, twin blades, stopping them from getting forward and getting this harassment in that they're trying to do all game. Plus, it will be able to kill the collector. There or thereabouts, I should say. Red health is not the real position they want to be in. But this is looking like it's going to be a head on engagement from the Empire player very shortly. Tank buses in play, VXs, and a few Tengus to boot as well. Looking to march on forward. As Pika seems like he's wanting to go for very greedy, go for another refinery at this stage. I think he's simply keeping his MCV deployed at this stage so he can use exactly that, the Desolator Airstrike, try and thwart this engagement for quite a little bit of time before then moving on forward. 
just bides that short amount of time while he can build up some bears, maybe some Tesla Troopers. As the MiGs just continue to fly on forward, getting the good scout off, maybe catching some of these MiGs off guards, but one of them does indeed go down, second one should fall behind us as well. Good picks off from Dimon so far. Stuff that he kind of needs, considering he does have the worst economy. Does kind of need more cost effective trades. Army now marching on forward once again, this time without the defense of a desolate arrest strike. We'll maybe find a little bit more trouble in defending this. First tank is starting to go on low health, but the bears are rolling on forward, not really getting the rolls that they seem to be really, really want to get. Now, the tank boss is still alive, rolling on forward. Ta uh, barracks in a little bit of trouble, trying to get a roar off here. Does get a great roar off, but still the tank was at the back, do still survive. And haven't indeed been crushed quite yet. Huge crushes, but still potentially not enough as he lifts off the VX to try and pick off a couple of the tanks. And if the tanks die, these bullfrogs are pretty much useless. Tank you still remain, tank pluses still remain. Looking to end the game right now. A couple of twin blades do still join the party though. With these uh with these uh bullfrogs trying to just get out of harm's way. But there's just not that much there's just not that much stuff out of the Soviets at this time. Still has the Bullfrog, still has the Twin Blades. But he's lost a collector. He's losing the units of these uh, tank busters. Now another Twin Blade goes down. Second one might fall as well. Barely falls. Now gives some extra free reign to these tank busters here. Heavy aggression coming out from the Empire player right now. Making the most of his uh, of his units, but it might just about have been thwarted. Tank was just continuing to come on out for the engagement, splitting off a little bit, trying to get some extra damage. Do get another tank, but now trying to finish off the refinery. Star rank ta uh, tank buster, and another one as well, looking to get some final shots off. I think the refinery might just about survive. Back into the Tengu production now, and with this tank army, with the twin blades, with the MIGs. Pika might just be able to roll on forward and end the game right now. Star rank Bullfrog as well, very, very powerful. Tengu's try and roll on forward, might be able to stop the repair of this refinery. But also in the meantime realise that he potentially he could have just been harassing this refinery at the same time. Engineer does indeed get in and that's going to be the full repair. Attempted expansion to the top left as well, as we can see, and as Dimon now sees with the Tengus. But realises he can't really engage with it quite yet. He could send a Tengu over, but it will just get picked off by one of those Twin Blades. Continue with the ones, staying on three of He's looking to potentially go for another, another push. But this desolate arrest strike has not been noticed yet. Comes on down. Is he going to actually get out of space in time with these tank busters? Three casualties. Not the worst, but not the best. But continuing to try and find an opening with these units here. With five refineries up. Peak is just in great shape. Peak is in great shape. There's no money coming in from the Empire player. And saying this, he's been on two refineries for quite some time. I don't think this collector has been rebuilt until literally just now. Crane now coming up for repairs. Gonna live, give a little, a little bit extra of hit and run potential from the Soviet player. Caught off guard by the star and Bullfrog gets a couple of kills there as he tries to escape. Tank was to transport, moving across the map looking to get some damage done. Maybe take out this refinery at the top as he uses the rest of the defenders. These twin blades starting to be aggressive, starting to move on forward. Tanks staying at home, however, for the time being. The 
tank boost to transport. Manages to find its way in. I don't think it's an inj He had tank boost before, so it has to be a transport with tank boosts. And there it is. So the twin blades come on over to save the day. Tengu's, where are they? Lagging behind. Should be able to clean this up. If not, before these bullfrogs come over and try and save the day. And the collector survives as well. Good defense out of Pika, out of Pika there. This is simply just throwing units away at his opponent right now, trying to make, desperately trying to make that attack at the left work. But losing a lot of money and a lot of units in the process, maybe wasting a little bit. As a distraction maneuver, sending the Tengu's over to the right, trying to also send some tank pushes in the center, making a little bit of a potential aggressive push towards here, but already prepared for this. Has a couple of bears out, looking to deal with this head on. Twin Blades, Migs, Bullfogs, chasing down all these tank Tengu's, just not allowing them to escape, not allowing them to get back to base and repair and regroup with the rest of the army. Now having to split up with the rest of the army, just have to be a bit careful. But it looks like Pika's just in such great shape. Lifts off the Tengu's, tries to get an engagement with the Migs, picks up a couple of them, and the Bullfogs aren't in the, in the engagement here, just like behind, not actually having the fight. So not the worst engagement for these Tengu's there. But he's going to need a lot more than that if he's going to somehow manage to get back into this game. Barracks now being focused down and that was just simply it. Piga had too much. And uh, yeah, there was nothing that Dimon could do about it. Piga has way too much and Dimon was simply just torn apart. Hello there. and welcome to game number 7 here. The ace match of this 2018 February Ladder Wars Finals. On the top of the map, as the yellow so the em yellow empire player, it is Dimon. And at the bottom, as the blue Soviets, it is Pika, tying up the series to a three-three last game, bringing it all the way to game number seven. This could go either way. Let's find out which way it goes. So currently, four dojo starts from the empire player, looking to simply go for both of these oil directs. And uh, both these are at the start, so not anything too uncommon there. And uh, what's it going to be out of Pika? So just both the refineries early on, no fast war factory for any sort of sick of harassment. Well, Dojo's coming out here. If he really, if he can, he'd probably like to send a Dojo over here as well. Maybe get across the map and be pesky over this side or in this this position. I've seen. I'm not sure if it was Pete, if it was uh, Dimon who did this before, or if it was someone else. I think it might have been Dimon. We're getting across the map and just being pesky with a dojo on his high ground, sending a few tank buses down later on in the game, just stopping that harassment to the top. But one of the dojos deploying on the high ground up here. Oh, just trying to destroy the bridge. Will he be able to get into? I think he will. Gets a couple of free kills of those Imperial warriors there. Nice pick off from Dimon, from uh, Pika there. So now going into that mecha bay, as we are seeing the super reactor for the war factory once again. Not really seeming to want to commit to the high ground because, of course, two flak troopers is a bit too much for a single dojo to handle. Breaks on forward with a few of these conscripts as well. Looking to just secure a location, get some garrisons, and maybe try and break on forward. But if he gets a Terradorn as well, it could be quite annoying with all these conscripts. For the Terradorn, just looking to simply take out the dojo at this stage. Not looking to try and uh, support these conscripts. But with the dojo out of the picture, it does indeed secure his location with his Alderic, which will give him a constant trickle for the remainder of this game. So probably was the right call. So the conscripts trying to move on forward, trying to pick up a power plant, which is a little bit unprotected. And probably won't have too much trouble in doing so. Tank joins the army as well. And using the turret to try and kill the Imperial Warrior. But it's a, it's a risky move doing that opposed to with you have, when you have Molotovs. Because Molotovs end up damaging the, the turret on, as you can see there. Turret not on a stun mode there. A little bit of a missed micro. 
will allow a couple of these Tengus to potentially escape, but of course the Bullfrog in the back stops this from happening. Good roll there. As he continues to try and push on forward and get a lot of damage done. These tanks are doing quite a lot of damage, and this Bullfrog, uh, being a great support unit in the back, camping this barracks as well, stopping these tank buses from getting out of control. As he's picking off another power plant. A lot of damage has been dealt here, but he doesn't really want to get crushed by this MCV here. Just to be careful. To get the repairs back on his uh, damaged uh, tank, uh, tank as well. Good micro out of Pika so, out of Pika so far. As he moves over, he's potentially moving over the high ground to try and continue his aggression. But both tanks are still alive! And another one joins the army as well, Bullfrog, still uh, alive and kicking at the back. The tank, it looks like it's indeed going to fall. Good micro out of these tanks so far. As the Tengus lift up in the air and look, potentially try and move the engagement elsewhere. Torodron comes and out. Does he get the stun off on this MCV right now? Yes, he does. Forces the Tengus to stay back for the time being at least as he needs to pick up the Torodron. But with a simple drop, he can move the Torodron into this bullfrog and stay alive for as long as he wants. Good pick off there with those Tengus. But he's losing a lot in the process, still not deciding to expand, just continuing with the tank pressure. And he's getting a lot of damage done. War Factory in a lot of trouble here. Three tanks continuously just focusing it down on leech mode. Trying to focus down the Tengu, as it's already is on low health. And if that goes down, all he's going to have is a single tank buster to defend against all of these tanks. He could even potentially just mix in a couple, and move in a couple of these uh, conscripts that he's got in the garrisons as well for extra anti-infantry. He's now going for this barracks by this uh, third of the location. Trying to get the MCV, trying to get the kill. Might just have enough firepower to do so right now. As the tank buster falls, now without that, only a single tanky remains and gets an MCV, which is pretty much gone. MCV falls, now there's nothing to stop. Pika from just wrecking this base. And there he goes. Dimon has been defeated. Pika will be victorious and go ahead with the first place prize here. In a very back and forth in a very back and forth series. Both players had definitely got the potential to win to win it. But Pika just coming out ahead. Dimon not quite having what it takes on Snowplow today. But well played from both players, but extra congratulations to Pika for taking this win. And thank you all very much for watching. This has been a decent series so far. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.